Is it possible to harvest solar energy from space and beam it down to Earth using microwaves? According to Martin Solta, the co-chairman at Space Energy Initiative (SEI), it's something that could be happening as soon as 2035. SEI is working on a project called Cassiopeia, which plans to place a constellation of very large satellites in a high Earth orbit. Once deployed, the satellites would harvest solar energy and beam it back down to Earth. In theory, it could supply all of the world's energy in 2050. There's sufficient room in orbit for the solar power satellites, and the Sun's supply of energy is vast. A narrow strip around geostationary Earth orbit receives more than 100 times the amount of energy per year than all of humanity is forecast to use in 2050. Earlier this year, the UK government announced £3 million in funding for space-based solar power projects, following an engineering study conducted by consultancy Fraser Nash, that concluded the technology was viable. Its satellites would be made up of hundreds of thousands of small, identical modules produced in factories on Earth, and assembled in space by autonomous robots, who would also carry out servicing and maintenance. The solar energy collected by the satellites would be converted into high-frequency radio waves, and beamed to a rectifying antenna on Earth, which would convert the radio waves into electricity. Each satellite could deliver around 2 gigawatts of power into the grid, making each satellite comparable in power output to a nuclear power station. Here on Earth, sunlight is diffused by the atmosphere. But in space, it comes directly from the sun without interference. So, a space-based solar panel can collect a lot more energy than a similar-sized one on Earth. In the US, the Air Force Research Laboratory is working on some of the critical technologies needed for such a system, in a project known as Space Solar Power Incremental Demonstrations and Research. These include improving solar cell efficiencies, solar to radio frequency conversion, and beam forming as well as reducing the large temperature fluctuations on spacecraft components and creating designs for deployable structures. Late last year, the team successfully demonstrated new components for a so-called sandwich tile, which is used to convert solar energy into radio waves. The microwave beams might sound alarming, but it has been demonstrated on Earth, and found to be effective and safe for both humans and wildlife. The beam is microwave, so it's just like the Wi-Fi that we have all the time, and it's low intensity, at about a quarter of the intensity of the midday sun. If you were on the equator in the desert, you'd get about 1000 watts per square meter, and this is about a quarter of that, about 240 watts per square meter. So it's inherently safe in that respect. Launching a large number of solar panels into space will be expensive, and given that any project could require hundreds of launches, it would generate a lot of carbon dioxide. An environmental analysis of the Cassiopeia project by the University of Strathclyde has concluded that overall, including launch, the carbon footprint could be as little as half that of terrestrial solar, at about 24 gram of CO2 per kilowatt hour. The cost of launch has fallen by 90% and is continuing to fall, and this has been game-changing for the economics. Secondly, there have been some real advances in the design of solar power satellites, so that they're much more modular, which provides resilience and reduced production costs. Thirdly, we've got real advances in robotics and autonomous systems.